Grandmaster William Chung is the current Grandmaster of the traditional Wing Chun Kung Fu system. With over 40 years experience, Grandmaster Chung is eighth in the direct line from the system's founder, a Shaolin Buddhist nun, Ng Mui. A lifelong friend and mentor to the late Bruce Lee, Grandmaster Chung taught to Lee many of the techniques Lee would later use in his illustrious film career. Grandmaster Chung travels the globe, spreading the art of Wing Chun to all corners of the earth. Author of numerous books and videos on Wing Chun, Grandmaster Chung also promotes healing and better health through his Qi Meridian Therapy and Qi Meditation programs. Often called the Master's Master, Grandmaster Chung has combined his healing and his fighting skills to become a complete martial artist. Hi, this is my assistant, Sifu Eric Oram. We're here to show you Wing Chun fighting system. Grandmaster Chung and Sifu Oram will now demonstrate the Silam Tao form. The Silam Tao form is the first form in the Wing Chun Kung Fu system. It sets the foundation for the beginning Wing Chun student by teaching the student the correct body movement, the proper stance, training the internal energy, the proper breathing, concentration, balance, independent use of the limbs, and mind-body coordination. While doing the Silam Tao form, it is very important to maintain concentration throughout the form's entirety, not allowing the mind to stray or wander. The eyes should look straight ahead. The tip of the tongue should touch the upper palate of the mouth, breathing in and out through the nose, breathing normally. When using the palm in Wing Chun, it is important to keep the fingers packed together and the thumb tucked against the side of the palm for the protection of the fingers and the concentration of the energy. The Silam Tao form introduces the beginner to the neutral stance, which is the foundation of all the footwork in the Wing Chun system. From this stance we will learn balance and mobility. The neutral position allows movement in any direction and at the same time stability in the stance to be able to generate force from the legs, which is the largest group of muscles in the body. Grandmaster Chung will now demonstrate the Silam Tao form again, this time more slowly so the practitioner can follow along more closely. Pay close attention to the body positioning, the angles of the limbs, the squareness of his shoulders, the head position, and the position of the rear hand tucked high and back in the closed fist position.
extra concentration is needed in order to maintain this arm position. Keeping focus in both hands at the same time, coordinating their independent movement. The first part of the Selim Tao form should be practiced very slowly, allowing the practitioner time to give proper focus to each point along the movement's path. In many of the movements, Notice the use of Grandmaster Chung's elbow and its placement in the center. This provides protection of the body as well as structural support of the movement. Both in block and striking situations. The purpose of the Selim Tao form is to not only introduce the beginner to the basic movements of the system, but also to concentrate the forward energy of the movements and to prep the practitioner for exercises in Qi Sao. Qi Sao is vitally important to the Wing Chun system for the training of contact reflexes, balance, close range vision the internal energy, and the ability to strike at close range. The development of contact reflexes through Qi Sao practice allows the practitioner to predict the opponent's energy, use that information to exploit the opening, trap, strike, and affect the opponent's balance. Sifu Eric Oram will demonstrate the Selim Tao form again, this time from a more side-on position. Notice again the upright structure of the body. The head balanced above the spine, the spine balanced between the feet, maximizing the balance of this position. Notice again as the left Tan Sao drives forward, the elbow gets behind it first on the center line keeping the best protection of the body as well as providing the structural support of the movement as it drives the energy out toward the opponent. And the Fuk Sao, like the Tan Sao, also has the support of the elbow. Even though the guard itself is drawing back toward the face, the energy is still projected forward. Again, the elbow driving in behind the drive out of the Fuxiao. Energy stays forward as the arm, the guard, withdraws toward the head. Again, making note of the rear hand position. Regardless of the movement of the Fuk Sao, the guard arm, or the Tan Sao, the rear hand stays in its high tucked back position. All the movements that we perform on the left side of the body will also then be performed on the right side of the body. Majority of the people are right handed so we train the left side first, coordinating it, and then the right. Wing Chun is an ambidextrous system, so we train equally on both left and right sides. Note the position of the guard arm covering the face. lowering the arm slightly in preparation for the Fuk Sao. Again, the elbow driving behind the movement.
the movements of the arm are isolated, independent of the movements of the body. In the Selim Tal form, the body's job is to remain stationary with the shoulders square through the movement of the arms. Gum sows, slightly out in front of the body. Striking behind with the outer edge of the palm. Pushing forward, lifting up underneath the opponent's arms, double futsal, and the closing sequence of the second part. And the pak sao sequence of the third part. The tan sao gan sao sequence. Again, always left and right sides, coordinating both sides of the body. The ban sao tan sao sequence. And the grab release. Sifu Eric Orem will now demonstrate some of the basic blocks of the Wing Chun system. First, the Pak Sao, isolating it from the Si Lim Tao form and training it in and of itself. Pushing the palm forward, then coordinating the Pak Sao block with an immediate counterattack and the accompanying footwork, taking the practitioner out of the line of the attack. Out counter punch with the half side step to the right. And another variation training the Pak Sao counter punch high, controlling the elbow simultaneous with the counter attacks. Very important through the follow ups in the Wing Chun system to maintain control of the opponent's elbow simultaneously through the counterattack. This drill is an important step to developing that coordination. Also training the footwork, very important to the success of the drill. Next Sifu Orem will demonstrate the Tan Sao. And the elbow collects behind the movement as it drives away from the body. Providing structural support to the movement, guiding the energy away from the body, out toward the opponent deflecting the strike, simultaneously protecting the ribs as it moves. Coordinating then with the simultaneous counterattack. Tansa remains on the center line, the counterattack on the diagonal on the central line and coordinating it with the footwork. As the body changes, each position supports the block structurally and provides power for the strike. Next, we have the Buell Sow. Again, the elbow collects behind the movement to add structural support as well as protect the ribs through the movement of the block. Then the Buell Sal Lop Sal combination. The two movements together work as a team to deflect the force of the oncoming strike away from the desired target. Then coordinating the footwork. With a step 
the body steps into the palm, which is a reference for the point of contact on the opponent's arm. The body supports that point, keeping the energy forward, and the stance adds power to the execution of the strike. The Biu Sao is a central line movement executed on the diagonal and the Lop Sao is a center line movement. The body faces that specific point of contact. Now we're going to do it once more, slow. A pak sao, chin sao, punch. And I'm controlling his elbow from this point here, stepping to the blind side. I'm controlling his blind side so that he can't use the other arm. And if he use the other arm to block, I can pin this arm and punch. Or I could create openings from here and this fighting system is called BOEC, Balance Opening Elbow Arms Cross. You attack the balance using the elbow, creating opening, attack the opening. If he used the other arm to block, you pin up the arm and then you finishing off from there. Right. Uh, we're going to run through it one slow. Punch comes in, Pak Sao Chin Sao, controlling the elbow, creating opening from the blind side, and I'm controlling his elbow and line up my center line along with his shoulder. I'm actually controlling his blind side and restricting the other arm, cannot reach me. So I have two arms against one arm. If you use the other arm to block, these two arms will be crossing. So I can pin up two arms and then destroy him from here. So this fighting system is, is called BOEC, Balance Opening Elbow Arms Cross. So we're going to do it once more slow. We're going to do it one small slow punch. Check the elbow punch, step to the blind side, cover, creating opening from here, so away from this free arm. If he push this free arm, this arm across, you can pin those two arms together, destroying his balance. So this is fighting on the blind side from the inside. So he's stepping far away from this, uh, this front leg, behind this front leg, from here. So this is fighting on the blind side, staying on the inside of his arm. He comes in, block to the elbow, counter attack at the same time, and check the elbow exchange. Step across away from his free arm, continue attacking, opening target, and finishing off on the pressure point at the throw. And you still line up 
your center line along with the elbow, with the shoulder here, and you're using two arm against one arm, and this is the BOEC system. We're going to do one more slow. Stop the round punch from here. Swing it around. Check here, here. Open up target area to the pressure point here and punch. You call, I'm controlling his elbow, in turn controlling his balance and creating a lot of opening away from the free arm. And so I have two arm against one arm. So I started off from the inside of his arm, I swing around, right, check the elbow. From here, I'm stepping on the blind side, controlling the elbow, controlling his blind side. So two arm against one arm, using BOEC, balance opening, elbow, arms cross. Just once more. You block from the inside, swing it around, you see the elbow, check the elbow here, continue punishing the opponent, opening the target area, and striking to the throw, finishing him off. Once more, check here, swing it around, punch, step across, and check the elbow, controlling the blind side, have the whole situation under control. He cannot reach me with this. If he bring this arm across, I'm gonna pin him up and destroying his balance, tie up his both arms together. Punch coming from underneath, gang sao and punch at the same time, you're putting pressure back to your opponent. Take this arm across, check here, check the elbow, controlling the blind side, opening the target area and finishing off striking to the, to the throw. Block with the gang sao, take this across, so you're controlling the blind side and you're avoiding the free arm. Block with the left arm, punch at the same time, putting pressure on your opponent. Take this arm across, check the elbow, continue punishing, opening up target area, finishing off on the pressure point on the throw. And if, if this arm comes across to block or to, and you can pin up both arms, so BOEC when arms cross, and you pin up both arms and destroying his balance. Okay, once more, block, punch at the same time, putting pressure back to your opponent, take this across, punch, and then you strike from there. You block the jab, jam up the back fist, pin him up on here, 
and you strike to the target area right along the vertebrae, target a pressure point here, pressure point here, so you strike here. Okay, once more slow. Block the jab, just lift up the arm, pin him up here, attacking his balance, attack here or here. You block the punch, jam up the elbow, pin his balance here, and attacking the target from behind. It's impossible for him to defend his back. Okay, once more. Kick comes in, you side step, kick back, punch, step to the blind side, and finishing off on the pressure point here. Once more slow, step, kick, and finishing off on the blind side, controlling the elbow, controlling the blind side. Step cross, make your target disappear, kick back, controlling the elbow from the and his blind side, and step across, finishing off on the pressure point here or on the pressure point on the side of the and destroying any effect of this other arm because you pin up the other arm. Once more. Block the kick, return with the kick, controlling the blind side. Kick comes in, block the kick, step to the blind side, kick here, check up the elbow, punch. If the other arm comes along to, to help out, you pin up both arms and you attack the target area. So this fighting system is called BOEC, Balance Opening Elbow Arms Cross. Block, kick, check up the, and pin up the arms cross from here. I'm going to do it once more slow. Punch comes in, you should build out, deflecting the punch. Kick to the ribs, step in, controlling the elbow and controlling the blind side, opening target area and finishing off. Once more, kick, punch, punch, set up for the Final blow. Punch comes in, kick, punch, punch, step to the blind side, and finishing off from there. Kick. Punch, punch. So all the time you're fighting with BOEC system, 
you only have to deal with one arm at a time. You don't have to worry about the other arm. You're controlling his balance, he can't kick you. Some basic combinations of the Wing Chun system. First, the combination roll punch and step forward. A roll punch consists of three punches, striking with a lead arm first. Striking with a lead arm because it is closest to the opponent. The elbow is in behind the fist to add to the punch's penetration and power. Covering with the knee on the circle step forward to keep the center protected throughout the movement. And now from the side angle. Again note, as with the Selim Tao form, the upright structure of the body. The head balanced above the shoulders, the shoulders between the feet. Maximizing the balance and the stability, as well as the mobility through the movement. Next we have the numeric punching. One, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, five. Coordinating the multiple or chain punches in Wing Chun is vital to the system's offense. The punches can often have a virtual machine gun-like effect and can overwhelm the opponent. Again, the energy driving from the use of the elbow behind the movement. Notice again the stillness of the shoulders through the isolation of the limbs. To vary the targeting and the coordination of both hands, we have the step forward two level punching. Lead hand first strikes high, then two strikes low, and then again high. High, low, low, high. Covering on the return. Throughout the Wing Chun system, the practitioner should have the freedom to move from one target to another, coordinating from one hand to another. Again, the knee protects the groin as we step forward into the opponent. And again from the side. Lead hand strikes high, two strikes low, and then high. Cover on the return. Again, we see the upright structure of the body, allowing the power to come from the stance, and pushing from the stance up through the body, behind the elbows, and out through the strike. Next, Sifu Orm will demonstrate the Beel Sal and Front Kick combination. In Wing Chun, kicks are used primarily as a counter attack. In combination with a block that precedes it. Again, in this case, the use of the Beel Sal. Shifting the weight into the support foot and kicking from that position. Followed by three punches to the head. covering and return. And again, always training both sides. The Biosau kick, 
strike, cover and return. Again notice that the body does not lean forward or back at any point but is continuously balanced in an upright structure. And from the side. As with the punches in Wing Chun, the front kick is a thrust, pushing through the ball of the foot to and through the point of contact. Maintaining the balance before, during, and after the kick. Repetition is vitally important. You must practice the movements daily in order for the movements to become instinctive, habitual, so that we can respond with a reflex with the movements and the coordination. Next, Sifu Eric Orm will demonstrate the Puxel front kick combination. The Puxel, again the shifting of the weight onto the foot, three punches to the head, cover and return. Again demonstrating the importance of the block first and then counter attack with the kick and then followed up by the upper body strikes. Allowing the opponent to commit to a, a force first and then block and counter attack while they are occupied with that commitment of force. and from the side. So the Paxel deflects the force away from the head, the counterattack with the kick, and the strikes to the head. It is very important in the Wing Chun system to always throw follow-ups, never stopping with one movement, but continuing in a combination of movements. immediately following the block with a strike to put the opponent on the defensive. And following through. Next we have the Lop Sow and Front Kick combination. The Lop Sow deflects the force of the strike and the front kick exploits the opening that that force has created. Again, followed up by three punches to the head. Covering and return. Lops out deflects, shifting the weight to kick. Three strikes and return. And as always, coordinating this movement on both sides of the body so we have the freedom to respond left or right whatever is necessary for the situation and from the side Notice the forward structure and energy of the lop -sow movement on its completion, keeping the energy out away from the body through the use of the kick. And the right side. Deflect, counterattack, and follow through.
the use of the block and kick combinations is of vital importance to the success of the Wing Chun system. One of the most important ingredients to the Wing Chun system is the footwork. Striving for the maximum amount of mobility and stability at the same time. To be able to move, but have balance within the movement. The side neutral stance. And the half side step. Being able to have the freedom of lateral motion, moving left or right, at any time. The footwork allows the practitioner to achieve the desired position, placing themselves in position to take advantage of a given opening. The switching of the front stances, moving from a left forward position freely directly to an opposite forward position. Again, Wing Chun is an ambidextrous system. We lead with both left and right sides depending on the need of the situation. And the half steps forward and back. And the full side step. Achieving lateral motion, but a larger distance than the half side step. The proper use of the Wing Chun footwork is vitally important to maximize the effect of its upper body movements. Grandmaster Chung will now demonstrate the Chum Q form. The words Chum Q mean bridging the gap or searching for the bridge. Chum Q form is also known as the footwork form in Wing Chun. The Chum Q form trains the stances in footwork imperative to the Wing Chun system. Some key factors in the Wing Chun footwork. Mobility. The practitioner must be able to move quickly from one stance to another. The stances in footwork must also provide stability and balance. Further, the Wing Chun Chum Kyo form trains the practitioner to generate power in blocks and strikes through strong stances. The Chum Kyo teaches the practitioner how to do these while moving from one stance to the other. The Wing Chun footwork also teaches the practitioner how to interrupt the Wing Chun practitioner must be able to interrupt his or her movements at any point. The ability to interrupt is essential. The Wing Chun practitioner would be willing to sacrifice speed and power to be able to interrupt a movement and flow into any other movement. The Chum Kyo form takes the basic movements that we learn in the Silam Tao form and puts them in motion. Grandmaster Chung will now demonstrate the Chum Q form in slow motion. Notice the beginning of the form is identical to that of the Silam Tao. The defining of the central line. The Wing Chun straight punch. Left, then right sides. The double Bill G strike and the triple Bon Sao sequence. Again, noticing the coordination between the footwork and the upper body. The front kick and arm break, and Jut Sao palm strike sequences. The Lop Sao and front kick. The Bon Sao and Lop Sao sequence. As always, repeating 
the same sequence on the opposite side, training both sides of the body equally. Notice how Grandmaster Chung's body is always in position to support the block. Lap Sao in front kick, followed by three Bon Sao's and Pak Sao low palm strike. And again, repeating the sequence on the opposite side. Again, making note how Grandmaster Chung's body is constantly supporting the upper body movements. Biu Sao, front kick and low side kick combination, followed by three low Bon Sao's and the double palm strike. And again, repeating this segment on the opposite side. Coordinating each movement with the footwork. The triple gum sow and closing punches. Hi, uh, Sifu Eric Gorham will be performing the Champkyu form. And this Biu Ji technique is from here, so the opponent throws the punch, right? You, you're using Biu Ji to attack the target area once more, to the eye or to the pressure point on the side of the jaw here, okay? Bong Sao, Bong Sao, and Hyun Sao kick. So this technique will be done like this. Punch comes in, Bong Sao, arm break, right? Um, bong, Jat, kick, arm break, right? And this move will be a punch comes in, lap, so kick, and a punch comes in, and lap, so from here. Once more. Okay. Uh, the reverse lap sao and kick is from here. Reverse, reverse lap sao kick is from here. Kick and then the punch comes in, you blong, and then pak sao reverse palm strike. Kick, blong, pak sao palm strike. Just once more.
the bill sole punch comes in, bill sole either kick to the kick to the knee or bill sole kick and to the knee and a low punch comes in, then you use double pole pai gel. Hi, this is Wing Chun meditation, it's Qi meditation. Uh, the Qi meditation is performed by, if you put your tongue up the upper palate behind the teeth on the ridge, and you connected the Yam Mak, the Fan Trang Meridian, and the Dok Mak, the Back Trang Meridian, and your breathing is slow, Imagine you bring your air in through the cranium, down the vertebrae, loop around, and then out, that's one breath. And then you're pointing six meridian to the other six meridian. You've got the lung meridian here, large intestine, circular sex, triple heart, the heart meridian, and the small intestine meridian. So when you go into this meditation, um, once you get hooked up in this uh, meditation, you will form a circuit and if you move your hand towards each other, hands towards each other slowly, you will find a little bit of resistance. And you test the resistance. If the strongest, that's your distance. Usually the distance will be parallel, will be about the shoulder width. Okay, so you bring the air in, loop out, and this is the internal Kung Fu Qi meditation. And <coughs> so once you form this circuit, you start stimulate because the same polarity re repel each other. So you stimulate the circulation in the beginning until you go into meditation. Then your metabolism and your body temperature is slowed down. Then you go into deep meditation. Uh, this meditation is very, very good for dealing with stress, dealing with nerve, and also build, rebuild health. So each, each meridian is connected to the organ. This one's connected to the lung organ. This one's connected to the large intestine. And this one is connected to the circular sex organ. This one is connected to the triple heart. And this one is connected to the heart organ. This one is connected to the small intestine. And plus, the center, the two meridian, the, the most important, the yam mark, the front trunk meridian, and the dog mark, the back trunk meridian. And then also, once you hook this up, this is called the large universe, because your leg meridian will start to be uh, at work stimulated. So it will be working on the troll meridian, uh, troll organs meridian plus 
the front trunk and the back, back trunk meridian. So when you come out of the meditation, you rub your hands together so you're getting rid of the excess energy. is the key. The goal is to repeat these movements as often as possible so that they become instinctive. This combined with a relaxed mind and body will make for a complete Wing Chun practitioner. In this day and age, crime and violence is right behind you. You can fight back with self-defense, and the best source is Black Belt Magazine, the world's leading magazine of self-defense. Learn how to defend yourself with fully illustrated in-depth articles, interviews with martial arts celebrities, plus trends and current events. Go with the best, Black Belt. To subscribe today, call 1-800-57-KARATE. There is only one martial arts legend. That legend is Bruce Lee. In his lifetime, he authored and co-authored only six books, including the Tao of Jeet Kune Do, as featured in the movie Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. There is only one place you can get all six books written by Bruce Lee, O'Hara Publications. Don't settle for anything less than the original. To order your copy of a Bruce Lee book or any other titles about the martial arts, call 1-800-396-4272. What are martial arts? Mysterious. Building the body and mind. Devastating. Exciting. Learn how to defend yourself now. Let the experts show you on Black Belt Video. To order your Black Belt Video for only $29.95, call 1-800-581-5222. Again, that's 1-800-581-5222.